Happy New Year and welcome back to the Art and Business of Writing podcast. I'm Chris Jones and I'm with the great Kayla Thomas, wishing you a happy and productive 2017. So Kayla, did you do anything wild and crazy to ring in the new year? (laughs) I was in bed by 10. That's about as crazy as it gets around here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, well... If you're if you're in bed at ten uh, on the west coast, you should just uh, migrate to the east coast. You, you'll last till one. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. My daughter usually stays up late and and feels pretty cool about it. What about you? Did you go out or do anything interesting? No, no. I completely try to avoid going out. As I've gotten older, I've gotten wiser in that regard. <laughs> so I typically like to stay in and yeah, drink, drink a bottle, you know, have a bottle of wine, eat some appetizers, and just kind of watch the new year come and go. So yep, yep. That's pretty much what it looks like at our house usually too. So yeah, nothing, nothing over the top. It has. I don't think it's been anything <laughs> over the top in the last ten years. <laughs> Oh, I would say probably within the last four or five years, I've had some wild ones, but um, I always regret it the next day, and the older you get, the longer it takes to get over it. Yeah, such is life, such is New Year's, but glad to be in 2017 (laughs) right now. Uh, It's going to be awesome. It's it's funny, because January always feels so much different than December, even though it's just a one-day difference. It feels very new, doesn't it? It does. You know, I, I this is will sound kind of silly, but the last few years, January has been a very difficult month for me between losing people I love and getting really sick. And um, so I've actually learned to dread January and don't feel like things really take off for me until February. So I'm hoping <laughs> that it's a little bit um, an, an uneventful January that kicks me off strong. Yeah, well, there's this new trend I was reading about last year where they tell you not to set your goals until February 1st because most people get excited and hyped in January, then they fall off. But typically, once February hits, you kind of hit your New Year routine and you know where you're headed. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're one of those February types. Maybe I am. And this year, I actually have started working on my, you know, we talked about our goals a couple shows ago, but I started working on my 2017 goals and habits in the last couple of weeks. So I feel like I've gotten a jump start. Nice, nice. So, well, today, you know, speaking of jump starts, we're going to talk about ways to crush it with Evernote. Um, you know, you and I are big Evernote users. Uh, we've been using it for years. I've been using, using Evernote since 2013. Uh, how long have you been using it? Um, Probably late 2014. I don't think I really, yeah, I didn't really know about it when I was writing my first book. I got into it when I was writing my second book, but, um, I really took, took to it and can't imagine trying to write my books and run my business without it now. Yeah, no, it's just a great tool. And for, you know, people listening, I hope you'll really take to heart what we're about to tell you today, because Evernote will change your entire life. If you're not using it, especially your writing and creative life. There's so many, uh, great ways and features that you can use Evernote uh, to really do amazing things with your writing. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I remember when I first started off with Evernote, I had the free version. And, you know, the free version, you can use it. I mean, you can use the free version very well, but it does get limiting. And so then I, you know, powered up to that premium, that $8 a month premium. And it's been one of the, the best things that I've ever done because I'm able to do a lot more with Evernote. But speaking of the different types of versions, let's talk about those a little bit. We've got the free, the plus, and the premium. Kayla, do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about kind of what comes in each package, just so they know coming out of the gate before we dive into the meat of it, really what comes with Evernote? Yeah, I think the basic one is a great one to start with. Um, I also started with the free one. And one of the biggest differences between the three levels is the amount of storage that you get. And the cool thing about Evernote is that it will um, give you so much storage every month. So it's not a cumulative, this is what you have forever. You get that much uploading, downloading, I don't know which direction you want to call it, um, space every month. So in the basic free package, you get 60 megabytes. In the plus package, which is the middle size one, um, which is 35 bucks a year, you get one gigabyte. And then for the premium, which I also use, you get 10 gigabytes. And so for me, I, I, um, I just like knowing that I have all that space and I never have to worry about, 
oh my gosh, am I going to go over and not be able to put more stuff in? Um, on all of them, you can stay organized across different platforms and you can clip web pages and images and you can also search text inside images and share and discuss your notes. And you can also put passcodes on your mobile apps. So if you've got some private stuff in there, somebody can't just steal your phone and look at your stuff. But that's where the similarities end. And um, one of the reasons I upgraded was I definitely wanted to be able to access notebooks offline. Because sometimes I'm somewhere where there's not Wi-Fi or I don't have cell service. And... Um, I want to be able to look at certain notebooks and continue my work. So I think that's a very valuable feature that's in both the plus and the premium package. And I'm trying to think what else. Oh, I really like the live chat option in um, the premium package. That's something you and I use quite a bit. And I think some of the biggest things uh, also that are in the premium that are not in the plus package is um, for one that live chat and the being able to search for text and PDFs that you've put into Evernote or search text in Office documents. So it kind of gives you some more integration into some other um, systems, which is pretty cool. And then of course, I meant I don't think I mentioned that you can sync across most of your devices with Evernote. So if you have the basic one, you can have I think it's two devices. So you could have your phone and your computer synced together. But then when you bump up to the middle package and um, the plus package and the premium package, you can sync to all the devices you could possibly want. So that's kind of a nice feature to upgrade to if you have more than two devices running your life. Oh, yeah. I use that a lot because I've got my Evernote on my laptop. I've got it on my phone and I've got it in my Kindle. So no matter what I'm using... I've got access to all my notebooks at all times. I never thought about using it in the Kindle. I guess I have a really old school Kindle, so it probably wouldn't work, but that's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, I've got the Kindle Fire, so I can just pop it open and start well, typing into Evernote. And it's really cool because, you know, if I'm reading a book or something, I can highlight text and move it over into Evernote, which is nice. Yeah, that's sweet. I guess I do do that on, not on the Kindle, but when I'm using the Kindle app, on my iPhone and I'm reading, I will highlight things and then copy it and paste it over into Evernote for future reference. So that's pretty, pretty cool to be able to do. Yeah. So, so now that we've gotten familiar with the different packages, let's talk about, you know, how writers can really get big major value out of Evernote. So what are some of your favorite tools within Evernote to use as a writer? Right now, I am totally geeking out on Web Clipper. I've been doing a lot of research for the book that I'm writing right now, and the Web Clipper tool lets you be out on the internet, and it's um, a, a plugin maybe that you add, and so there's a little icon on your dashboard at the top of your internet, Explorer, wherever, and so if you're on a web page and there's an article or some information that you really want to hold on for later, Instead of having to select it all and copy and paste it and stick it in a Word document or something, I just poke that little elephant icon and it says Web Clipper. It lets me choose if I want the whole page or a simplified article or just an image. And it immediate and it lets me choose which notebook I want to put it in and also tag it for whatever research I was doing. So it's already organizing it before I've even gotten it into Evernote. And it kicks it into Evernote and I can go back to that article anytime I want and use that information that I was needing for my work. And um, I also use it for like business blog posts and stuff. I don't always, I don't really like to read on my laptop. I would prefer to open a blog post and read it on my phone or something later. So a lot of times I'll clip those types of things into Evernote into my business section and go back and read them when I have time or when I'm waiting for something. So the Web Clipper is probably one of my most used tools for that kind of thing. Yeah, I love the Web Clipper for yeah. the same reason. Uh, being able to uh, – because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tab freak sometimes, and I'll have like 16 tabs open. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, but I don't want to save <laughs> – <laughs> but I don't want to save everything as a favorite, you know, and come back to it later or put it in a folder. So being able to use that, that little um, – that little applet there and just click, you know, click the web clipper and move it into Evernote allows me to store all those 
blog post like you said it's it's a fantastic way to read later if you're a person who you know doesn't want to read in a browser like you say or if you're a person who just is a tab person like me and you have a bazillion tabs open but you probably don't want to slow your machine down <laughs> or get distracted by them it's a great way just to save something for later right and i also really enjoy um, being able to grab images um, sometimes images will help inspire me. A lot of people will use Pinterest to make boards and things to help them describe things, but I just turn my book folders or book notebooks into that kind of a pin board of images to help me, you know, an image that's inspiring a scene or a person or, you know, that kind of thing too. So it's a great, great tool. So another thing we like to do in Evernote is collaborate, right, Chris? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I've done this mostly with yeah, you, no. but it's a great thing. I've really enjoyed how easy it is to work with somebody on projects with this program. Yeah, no, I enjoy you know because you and I can talk back and forth within a notebook or a stack of notes. And I've done also done it with another friend of mine. Him and I worked on a course together. We did an e course together, and we created a stack of notes there, and then. Uh, I shared that stack with him, and so we were able to communicate and we're able to not only text message each other through the app, which is helpful because then it keeps all the text messages together, but also we're able yeah. to go inside and work inside the documents together so that, you know, whenever something needs to change or be updated or we need to build something really quickly, we can build the entire thing together as opposed to, you know, the, the alternative, which is passing documents back and forth together in an email or sharing a Google Doc, which, again, you have to have access. With Evernote, you can do that stuff right through your mobile. Yeah, that is super handy. And I've learned as I've collaborated with other people um, on things that you do that email back and forth and you end up with 15 different documents with slight changes and it gets confusing and it's easy to use the wrong one. So it's kind of dangerous. Um, the only bummer about this, I know we're singing the praises of Evernote, but something you and I have noticed when we're collaborating is you can't type in the note at the exact same time. You kind of have to take turns. Right. We can watch each other update. Like if you're in there typing, it keeps updating and I can see what you're doing and I can see your little face up in the corner so I know what you're doing, but I can't write at the same time. So I have to wait till your face goes away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, to which you know, there's always some sort of note, I'm out of the document now. And I, and I think that's one of the challenges, though, because, you know, to collaborate on a document in real time might be difficult because you could overwrite challenge, overwrite each other's changes. So I can understand that that's probably always going to be the way it is. But I, I definitely enjoy being able to collaborate in documents in Evernote. Oh, yeah, for sure. And even if one of us is in it and typing, the other one can be messaging that person and just putting bugs in your ear. And so... If I see you in there being like, oh, let's stick that in there and you can just do it while you're there. So it's there's lots of different ways to go about how you want to work with each other in there. But it's it's really an amazing tool. Yeah. And it's a great tool for especially for co-authoring. If you're co-authoring a work together, you know, it's fantastic. So if you're writing a book together, writing a paper together, collaborating on a story together, it's a great way to compile your research in the same place and write the same story. For sure. So there's also story stacks. That's another feature that I have learned to love. I actually just discovered it maybe in the last year or so. I didn't understand what they were, but now that I get it, a story stack is where you can drag um, several different notebooks all, all together into one pile. And so I'm working on a series of books. So I've started a story stack that has all of the notebooks that pertain to that series in the story stack. So I can open up that stack and everything is right there and I can go into the appropriate notebook to do whatever work. And it's easy to pull things into um, correlating notebooks and that's where tagging comes in really nice too as far as searching and stuff is tagging and keeping everything in those story stacks to keep like ideas and projects together. Yes. Yeah. I like to use story stack to uh, keep all my clients in one place. So I have a, I have a stack called clients and each client has their own folder. Um, I've got one for publications. And so for every magazine that I write for, they've got their own folder. And so all my notes and interviews from those different uh, publications will all go into the correct folder. So it is, it's great for being able to keep, uh, lots of ideas that are like in one place. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's fantastic. I wouldn't have thought about it to, well, I don't really work with clients, so that's probably wouldn't we think of it, but <laughs> to keep the clients, that's a great idea because you can really, it's a way to keep you from completely cluttering your main dashboard with, you know, 200 different notebooks. And even though some of them are the same and should be by each other, they're, I think they're arranged alphabetically and it can get confusing. So it's really nice to clean up that dashboard by making story stacks. Yeah, it is. And, you know, if you're a person who's got a business developed around a certain number of products, if you're a freelancer or a writer with certain numbers of products that you work on, you can kind of have the name of whatever you're calling your entity as the title stack. And then within it, you can have all your marketing stuff, all your logo stuff, all yeah. your bio stuff, your headshots. So you can basically segment your entire business inside of stacks of notebooks so that you always have access to those stacks of notebooks in one place. So Evernote's a great way to, to organize your entire company in if you're running, you're running your you know, writing business as a company. For sure. And, you know, I was just thinking, too, as we were talking about, you know, syncing between devices earlier and being able to use, depending on your plan, however many, there's always the option to go use their actual website. Yes. So, you know, if you don't, you're on somebody else's computer, you end up at the library or something and using a public computer, you can log into your account through a web browser and work away on that. And that can happen from any computer. So that's a really nice feature as well. In fact, do you, don't you use the internet browser uh, version of it more often than the app? Do, is that you that does that? I do use the internet browser a lot. Um, I use it whenever I need to organize primarily. So I do a lot of a lot of um, of the writing that I do. I do it in my phone. But then when I need to organize mm -hmm. ideas, then I'll go and look at it kind of big picture because I want to see a larger layout. And then I can move stacks mm -hmm. around, move things change titles, add tags, and it's a lot faster to do it that way when I can see a, a full spread. Gotcha. I haven't used the website one very much. I have the app on my MacBook, and so I just open it up and blow it up on the whole screen. So then I have that big screen view like you're talking about versus the the one on the mobile for when you're needing to drag things around. So what else do you use it for, Chris? I know that you have delved into some features. Uh, you're a little bit more of an explorer than I am sometimes. So you've delved into some features that I haven't played with a whole lot. Oh, yeah. No, I love I love Evernote. So one of the things that I enjoy doing with Evernote is uh, recording audio for books and for interviews. So when you create a new note for whatever the case may be, if you're going to start a book or if you're going to record an interview, if you're working on a story and you're going to start an interview – I like to be able to open the note and then press record. You press record, you'll see the little lines uh, that say that the interview's already started, and you just set the device on a table and let it start to record. It's got phenomenal range, so you don't have to worry about, you know, is, can, the, can the app hear me? Is the phone close enough? Do I have to hold it to my mouth? I can sit it on a tabletop, and I can pick up both parties in the conversation very loud and clear. And then a cool thing you can do is, you know, if you're a person who doesn't want to have to transcribe later, I know some people type slower than others. I'm one of those people. You can either use um, an online service called Transcribe, which is a, a site where you can upload that MP3 that you saved in Evernote onto the browser, and then you can type it at your own pace, or you can uh, download Rev and drop that file into Rev and send it off and Rev transcribers will send it back to you within 24 hours they charge a dollar a minute per audio which depending on how important that uh, file is to you uh, it's a bargain or or not but you can give that a try and we'll put a link to both of those uh, applications in the show notes but yeah I love using it as a recorder because then if my mind is all over the place and I've got my mind thinking a lot faster than I can write then I can pop the recorder out and I can actually record myself. So I think if you're a person who's a, maybe a fiction author like yourself, Kayla, you can you know talk about different scenes or characters or descriptions or plot ideas and just record all those and then come back later and actually type out your notes or flesh out the rest of those ideas that you recorded um, on the fly. Because sometimes it's just not feasible to to write, you know, depending on where you are, you may not be able to take the time to write. Sometimes I'm in my car, so I'll pop it open at a traffic light and I'll start to record while I'm driving. So it all depends on the situation you're in, but being able to use the recorder is a, uh, it's just, it's worth its weight in gold to me. 
That is really cool. And I didn't even know that's what you were going to say because uh, the only audio I've really worked with is we record these conversations with each other and then you drop the audio into Evernote so I can listen to it and create our show notes around it. And so I thought that's all that you were going to talk about. I had no idea that it had that other feature. So that's that's very cool. And the transcription idea is neat, too. I know a lot of authors, I'm not one of them right now, but, you know, never say never, are into transcribing or, um, excuse me, dictating their work right now, whether it's because they have carpal tunnel issues that's limiting how much they can be at the keyboard or they would like to, you know, do writing and go for a walk at the same time. So um, and there's other tools that they use for it. But this might be an, an option for people to consider if things like maybe Dragon or those types of things aren't working for them. Something else I like to use Evernote for, you'd mentioned a little bit uh, ago, was swipe filing. I'm a big, big swipe filer. And basically what a swipe file is, is just a collection of ideas, a catalog of ideas. You talked about Pinterest before and creating a stack mm -hmm. of ideas. And I love creating swipe files. So I have a swipe file stack. And then within that swipe file stack, different notebooks, there'll be a, a notebook for cover ideas, book interior ideas, text styling ideas, uh, motivational and inspirational quotes that I can use, uh, memes. So different things that I can use and plug in for either stories or blog posts or, um, or stuff that I need aesthetically for myself as I work on my projects. I've got access to all those ideas. So sometimes I'll pop into a Barnes and Noble and I'll walk around and I'll take the Evernote app, open up the swipe files and I'll shoot photos of other people's covers just so I can see, well, who's got a, you know, whose covers are cool right now. Or I'll look at different aesthetics. Like I said, like the type and I'll put it in the type file or I'll open up the book and look at how the layout is of the contents page or certain other stylings. And I'll put those in the, in the design uh, notebook. So being able to use it as a way to catalog and store ideas and have these ideas in one place uh, is a great thing to do with Evernote as well. So I, I have a question about that because I, I may have been doing it and not realized it. Um, so when you're saying swipe file, are you, so you talked about actually shooting a photo with it in that instance, but if you were, a, say you were on your phone and you were looking at something would you literally just swipe it with your finger and it sends it to Evernote? I'm a little bit confused about the logistics there. No, no. I would just open it up, click on photo, because it'll create a photo note, and then just take the picture. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, swipe file is just a term. Okay. It's just a term for it. It's an old school term, but that's what it's called. Because back, oh. <laughs> back in the day, what they would do is, uh, and some people still do it, and to a degree, I've, I still have some swipe files where it's all paper. So I would, you go and you swipe magazine pages out and you stick them in folders oh. gotcha well as people will be figuring out the more you and i are together doing this we they will realize that you're the more tech savvy <laughs> of the two of us <laughs> i teach me things all the time because i was just sitting here going huh so you just swipe it with your finger so okay no well, no thank you for breaking that down it's evernote not there tinder. might be somebody else who didn't get it either yeah it's evernote not tinder <laughs> And hopefully I'm not like getting ahead in your list, but as you were talking about shooting the photos, um, I was, I've discovered that there is a setting that you can make it scan a document. So it's yes. not just a picture. It actually scans it. And that is very cool. That is and that's actually next up is, uh, you can actually use Evernote as a scanner for business cards and documents, something else that I love to do with it. So, you know, I love to network. I love to meet people. And of course, as you network, you're going to collect packs of business cards, you know, and you'll have stacks of them on your desk. So rather than having these stacks of business cards lying around, what I like to do is I like to scan them into Evernote. So I'll put the business card on to a table, lift the, lift the phone, you know, turn the phone um, landscape, and then the phone um, through Evernote will actually pick up the document itself. So it'll auto shoot it by itself. And then what it does is it takes all of that information and pulls it off the card. And I think there's a way to integrate it with LinkedIn. So it'll take, uh, it'll take it linked it with LinkedIn as well. But yeah, you can scan business cards. And then something else I like to do, um, as a freelance writer is I keep copies of my contracts in there. So if I'm working on a contract with someone, then I can actually 
take the entire PDF and I can either take the PDF and email it to myself into Evernote or if the PDF is on a screen, I can take that screen and then use the web clipper that you talked about earlier and save that document in the web clipper using the web clipper clipper into Evernote. So I like to be able to have my contracts in Evernote and then you open it up in Evernote and you can see each page of that PDF. So you always have a copy of your contracts all in one place. So it replaces the old foldering system that you may have on your desktop by sticking everything inside of Evernote, which to me is a lot quicker than the old folder hierarchies that you find on your computer. And then one other way yeah, that you oh, can do wow. it. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and then something else you can do, you know, for people who are really, you know, who struggle with keeping things for their accountant for business, is you can create a receipts folder. Mm -hmm. Create a receipts a notebook. And then every time you go out, scan your receipts and then keep all your receipts in Evernote. That way your accountant doesn't kill you later on. You can just give the accountant email access yeah. right into Evernote and boom, it's all done. Right. And you don't have to have little boxes of paper floating around. That's one of the things I love about Evernote is cutting back on the little pieces of paper that are running around all the time. Yes. It's a great way to do that. You can keep, you know, copies of your business licenses in there. You can keep copies of any and every document that you have related to your writing business. So definitely use the scanner feature and it's so easy to use. Um, one of the things I use the scanner feature for is um, if I've been doing a lot of notebook writing by hand and I'm not wanting to have to type it all back into the computer. I've been taking pictures and scanning that information back into Evernote and I just, the pages of my journal are just in Evernote then to look at. I'm glad you brought that up. That's really cool. Um, Moleskin has these Evernote notebooks now. So I'm really eager to try those out. They're, they're kind of pricey. That's like for like the small, thin ones, they're like $22 for the thin ones. So I'm gun shy. I'm hoping that maybe Jeez. someone will just give me a gift card and I can try it out. <laughs> but they say that you can yeah. handwrite inside these notebooks and then you can scan it. And when you scan it using this special Evernote paper, it'll, it'll translate it for you. Like it'll digitize all your handwritten notes. So if anyone listening has ever tried the Evernote notebooks, definitely let us know how those are. Uh, leave us a note, email us. We'll put our information at the end of the show notes. Yeah, for sure. I've seen them as well and been curious. Yeah, I'm just not $22 curious yet. No, quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something else I enjoy doing with Evernote is creating ebook libraries. So I'm a person, you know, I'm always reading blogs. I'm always signing up for things on people's websites because I want the tips and I want the, the five tips how to do this and the six ways to do that. So I want all these little uh, premiums. And so I can take those premiums that I get because typically when they open up, they open up in a browser. The PDF pops up in a browser when they send it to you. I can use the, the web clipper and save all of those and create ebook library so I have all these book libraries from like Grant Cardone and Tim Ferriss and all these different thought leaders all in one place through their PDFs so it's a cool way to store all of those and then also uh, if you don't want to read in Evernote for some reason and you have a Kindle there's this really awesome app called send to Kindle that you can download and then you all you have to do is drag and drop PDFs that you want to put in your Kindle into this uh, interface and it'll send everything to your Kindle. So two great ways to create ebook libraries, one in Evernote and then one through your Kindle. But yeah, I love creating ebook libraries in my Kindle just so I have access to all of those lead magnets because it's it's part of research that I'm always in, you know, in the writing space is how do I create a really cool lead magnet that people would want? So it's a great way to save all of those. That's a great idea. Even in the fiction world, where you're needing to create lead magnets and things, and I'm following along of authors who are ahead of me, and that is a fantastic idea. I'm assuming you probably have to have a Kindle Fire or something to make it work, or? No, all you need is your Kindle email address, and every Kindle has one. So you just have to go to your, uh -huh. go into your settings, and you'll see uh, your Kindle email address, and you can send anything over to your Kindle. Cool. You are just full of good ideas today, Chris. Yeah, yeah, I try. <laughs> uh, now, the, now, this one, this one's really cool. This one's presentations. Uh, I love using Evernote for presentations. Uh, and and it's, it's a premium feature, so it doesn't come with the free or the plus, but it allows you to turn notes into presentations. And it's not as sophisticated as PowerPoint or Keynote, 
um, you know, which they're more robust. I think Keynote probably is, you know, the top notch when it comes to presentations. But it allows you to use pointer colors. So if you're going to do a presentation on a screen, you can change the pointer color and you can make simple presentations. But I prefer using it as a teleprompter. And so what I can do is I can open up Evernote on my laptop. And if I'm doing an audio presentation like we're doing right now, we're doing a podcast, if I just want to see all my notes on the screen in a large enough font to where I can just scroll and keep up, then I can use it as a teleprompter because then I can change the size of the text. I can uh, change how the text is positioned on the page. And then it just reads in a very focused black and white version. So the screen is uh, black and the text is white, so it's a lot easier to read. And of course, you know, someone may ask, well, can't I just do this with a Word document? You can, but why would you want to do that? You know, it's not, Word isn't sexy, <laughs> Word isn't cool, and, <laughs> and Word is so problematic, but Evernote, again, it puts you in, it puts you into a focus mode, and then you can just slowly uh, move your text, scroll your text up the screen, and it makes it so easy to deliver presentations using Evernote. If you, I've been curious about this because I've seen the potential. And as you know, I do presentations um, often at schools to um, t talk to kids about what it's like to be an author. And I was worried that you have to actually give the presentation to Evernote. It's not something that you could save to a thumb drive and then go do it off of someone else's computer you'd have to do it off of your own is that correct yeah you do it through your own evernote it's not yeah because it's an evernote uh, it's an evernote feature built into evernote so it's not like a standalone like a powerpoint where you can email a powerpoint or okay. email a keynote so okay that's what i was thinking so yeah. i just want people to know that the, you be sad to create something so big and beautiful and then realize that you can't get it out to anybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah now, um, and then the last thing that I like to use it for is to send email into Evernote. I think everyone's goal is inbox zero every day when they wake up. How do I delete as many emails as possible? Well, with, uh, Amen. you know, with Evernote, if you're subscribing to email lists on a regular basis because you want information from people, use your Evernote email address. You know, Evernote gives you an email address. It'll be like, you know, Chris1234 at Evernote, you know, dot net or whatever the case may be. But look for your email Evernote address in your settings and then use that in place of your personal or your business email address. So when you subscribe to things, all those things get sent directly into Evernote so it doesn't clutter your, your inbox out. So it's a great way to get all those um, subscriptions and not worry about having a full blown up inbox. Evernote can do the heavy lifting instead of your inbox, but something else I like to do is if there are things in my inbox that I don't necessarily want to delete, but I don't necessarily want them there either sitting in my inbox, then what I'll do is I'll forward those into Evernote. So just hit the forward icon and then just send them right into Evernote and let them sit there in a folder for to read later or whatever the case may be. And then you can tag things too. So if you have things like email newsletters, Use the tagging function in Evernote, you know, and put, you know, email newsletter as the tag. That way, when you go to search it, it'll pull up everything that you've moved over there. But, yeah, sending things to Evernote will save you so much inbox clutter. That is amazing. You know, I have been working on building my email list, and so I've subscribed to some people to see what their autoresponder sequences look like. And I didn't know I could forward them to my Evernote. So I've been copying and pasting the actual email and then, you know, copying it out of the email and then pasting it into Evernote and then deleting it when it could just be a click of a, a forward button. So I am, I'm really glad to know this. I hopefully that everybody else will be as excited as I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. But there's something you like doing too, which is keeping lists. You want to talk about that a little bit? Oh yes. I am a crazy list lady. Um, <laughs> I, do all kinds of lists. I keep a working note for all of my books of like if I think of a scene that needs to be done or a change that I need to go back and do, but I don't want to break my rhythm of moving forward on the book, I'll pop into Evernote, just make a quick note, go back and change the name of this person to this and little notes like that to keep me going. And then I can just open that list when I sit down to work. And it lets me, you know, just tick them right off. So that's one way I do it um, in there. And another kind of list 
is my character lists. I keep them in there. You can do that in Scrivener, and I did it for a while, but the thing is, is if you're working away from your computer on a notebook, then you don't have access to your Scrivener list. So I've started keeping all of my character lists with their descriptions and backstories and things in Evernote because even if I'm just out at a coffee shop with a notebook, I've still got my phone and I can open that up and double check those types of things. So those are um, just a couple of examples of lists that I keep for my writing. Um, Right now I'm planning a um, a book signing at a local coffee shop bar. And so I have a to-do list and I'm getting ready to rebrand one of my books. And so I've put all the to-do lists of the things that need to happen and those processes in there as well. Right. And the cool thing about that is when you create those lists, you can also set reminders so that you don't forget that you have a list or you forget that you have a task on the list. Right. <laughs> That's always a bummer. And they have a great tab system where you can put little squares, empty squares next to things on your list and you can check them off. So you can physically see. I Another thing I do, I keep track of my beta readers and where they are in the process. I will check off. I have two check boxes next to each beta reader's name and I check off a box to tell me I've sent them a piece and when they give me their notes, I check off that I heard back from them so I can keep track of who I'm hearing back from reliably and who I'm not hearing back from reliably. So that's kind of a good way to keep track of of those kinds of little things too and also their email addresses and things and the, and the type of device they like to read on so I can send them the appropriate type of file. Evernote is like this amazing ecosystem for a writer to be able to really maximize their entire content strategy. Definitely. And I feel like, well, obviously after talking with you today, I have barely scratched the surface and I'm sure there's more things even you need to play with. And I, you know, I think there's probably even more things we can do to make it work for us even better. There is, there's this thing called the FaceTime camera note and I haven't played with that one yet. But I'm imagining that you oh. can record yourself. Yeah, so I haven't played with that feature yet, so I'll have to, we'll have to report back on that one later. But yeah, Evernote is so full of just robust features that you can use. And, you know, we're about to come in for a landing here, but there are so many ways, even beyond the writing, that you can use Evernote for. Um, I've used it to keep all my automotive records in or to inventory things in my house. So I mean, what are some things you use it for beyond the writing? Well, I little things like keeping track of who wanted school pictures for my daughter or um, and, and if I gave them to them or not. Again, a checklist. I did our Christmas shopping. I organized the Christmas shopping in there, who we needed to shop for, how much we could spend. And then once I purchased a present, I wrote down what it was. Because sometimes I shop really early and forget that I've shopped for someone. And I also made a list of, you know, we have this much money to spend. And I wrote down everything that we spent underneath it. So I knew whether I was staying in budget or not. So that was really helpful. Um, I like the idea of the automotive records. That might be something I incorporate, but for me, it helps me. Oh, my kids book fair. I've been running my um, daughter's school book fair the last year, and there's a lot of moving pieces there. And I put everything in Evernote. So when I'm up at the school doing business stuff, I can just pull it up and look at it. So there are just, you can use it in pretty much any instance in your you life. Really can. Yeah, I also keep um, all of my account account numbers in there. So if I, you know, like for my gas bill or my electric bill, just the, because when you, mm-hmm. when you get on the phone, you're like, oh, what's your account number? You're like, oh my gosh, where is my account number? So having the account numbers in Evernote also saves you a step. So Evernote is your everything tool. We talked about a lot of the writing, but... Feel free to download it, explore it, and then write back to us and let us know how you're using Evernote uh, to improve your your writing life and even your personal life. So there you have it, both sides of Evernote. Be sure to check out the show notes to get a rundown of what we discussed today, plus links to some of the apps that we talked about that were not a part of the Evernote ecosystem. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me at chris at readywritelaunch.com or by filling out the form on my site. And you can find me on Twitter at Chris Jones Inc. And Kayla, tell them where they can find you. They can get a hold of me at Kayla at KaylaDonThomas.com or just through my website, KaylaDonThomas.com. And I am also on Twitter, and my handle is Kayla Don Writes. Awesome. So happy writing. Cheers to a great 2017. And we'll see you next time.